Hello and welcome to another episode of The Defenders on Sunset TV and veering away from soldiers and soldiering and the challenges on our frontline borders. We are going to look at a subject which continues to be in the news but very few people know enough about it and certainly not as much as our two distinguished guests today. We have Dr. Selva Murthy who is a former chief scientist and controller of the DRDO and now the president of the MET group for research and innovation. And morning to you. Welcome on the show, sir. And we have Dr. Rajiv Narayanan, who to people who follow missile related issues doesn't need an introduction. And uh, Dr. Narayanan, you have done your PhD on a subject which, to my mind, has geared in many ways many of our missile initiatives because under the missile control technology regime, India has been denied access to technologies, India has been denied the opportunity to join the club of the countries that try and control the world from a circle that runs from Vladivostok to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. But I would like you to explain briefly how the MTCR for you and for many other scientists was the benchmark that you needed to cross or deal with as you went on with scientific uh, achievements in the missile field. Look, missile technology control regime through a challenge, through a challenge to develop this miss all the guided missiles and other technologies also. Other it has got drones also, it has got cruise missiles, even the space programs. All are controlled, all items and goods are controlled under MTCR, which has got two annexes. Mm -hmm. So, this is as uh, like any other multilateral export control regime, is an informal body which does not talk about ban, yet it almost leads to banning an item which may contribute to development of ballistic missiles, especially and other, other platforms also, which may, may become carriers of weapons of mass destruction. So, of course, it was a challenge. India had started testing some key technologies, a state of the art technology for guided missiles and the world was alarmed. A developing country is accomplishing so many feats and with limited resources. So, of course, they had to come out and they came out and they came out and they tried to strangle India's project, India's program. But the program which in the integrated guided missile development program which we are supposed to talk today started in 1983. But many of the works for this project was done uh, were done earlier also like it started in 1958. Then our for, say our uh, rulers or our government realized that the guided missile development age is coming because it was used in, in the World War II. And so we have also to take steps. So, earlier some steps were taken, some institutions were created mm. and these institutions finally resulted in mm. IGMDP integrated guided missile member, ballistic integrated guided missile development program and it really made us, I will not say proud, but it made us realize that we have potential, we can modern, modernize our arsenals indigenously despite great resistance from outside powers, those who do not want it, want us to develop it. Mm. So, this is how it is so important. We developed our own okay. industry. Okay. So, basically, I mean, to my understanding, uh, two things happened. One is that it gave impetus or it gave encouragement to the Make in India initiatives that if we can do it the way our scientists are doing it in the missile uh, sphere, then why can't other parts of our industry? Uh, follow their example and there are reasons for that. I do not want to get into it right now, but quite clearly uh, they are not as driven, let me say, as our scientists are. <laughs> uh, Dr. Selva Murthy, I want you to explain briefly right. that, you know, the initiative where in March 2019, we had the ASAT program by which a satellite shot off a defunct uh, satellite in the air or missiles sort of a defunct satellite in the air. Now, it is a joint program of the DRDO and the Indian Space Research Organization. But a question that comes to my mind 
has India to prove its scientific ability inadvertently entered an arms race in space? I won't agree with that, uh, that we are entering into arms race. But I would like to uh, uh, tell all the viewers that today India is one of the strong milit uh, military power. And also it has uh, uh, its own indigenous technologies, including missiles. We are very, very strong. One of the top five countries which has this capability of mm -hmm. uh, the missile capability. Where we have right from Agni, Prithvi, Akash, Nag, Trishul, Brahmos, interceptor missile, submarine launched missile, Nirbhay. Like this, there are a numerous family of missiles have been developed for different ranges, different applications. Mm. Surface to air, surface to surface, mm. air to air, air to surface. So all this type of missile, including the anti-radiation missile, Rudram. So anti-satellite anti missile, which you referred, is one of the important Shakti demonstration of our country. The program itself was coded as Shakti. Because only three countries today have this capability. There is uh, US, Russia, China. So we have entered that club. Mm. And we destroyed a satellite at the low Earth orbit, mm. which is our own satellite. That's mm. why the ISRO came in. Otherwise, it's a program of DRDO, mm. where we use the, uh, the Prithvi version of the interceptor missile which can reach that altitude. And then using a kinetic vehicle, you can destroy that satellite. But this is very important in the sense that the assets in satellites, the space-based security and weaponization of space, which is being talked about, it's very important in the future warfare because all your missiles and also you can have the sense what is the enemy doing, the other people are doing, you can sense from satellite. So during war, it is very important to disconnect that communication from satellite, whether using GPS communications. So that is why this demonstration of Shakti is to have a precision technology because a missile could reach a moving body at that altitude. Mm. And this is also a moving body. To go and reach and precisely destroy a satellite is a real uh, big accur accuracy and also big demonstration of our technology provisness and okay. capability. So while you are saying we are not getting into the space arms race, but we have made all sorts of technologies which allows us to get in there should right. we decide to. Uh, Dr. Narayanan, I want to understand another aspect from you and that is that we are making a new class of ultra modern weapons which can travel six times the speed of sound. At the same time, they will be uh, what you call hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicles and uh, some trials to that effect have already been yeah. considered and initiated. Now, uh, what does hypersonic speed do for missiles as against non-hypersonic speed? Because when you launch a missile from the distances, some of the distance missiles, as Dr. Selvamurthy had mentioned about, ICBMs and long-range missile systems. I don't think at least our adversaries have the ability to monitor every missile system that is in place and when it is launched. Because when it is launched, there is normally not so much of time available for the adversary yeah. to react. So, does more speed add to more efficacy of missiles? or more speeds allow you to retain surprise? Very good question and there are several dimensions to it. So let me start point by point so that it is easy to understand and comprehend. G. First, Mac 5 is the benchmark or is a cutoff point for calling any, any missiles hypersonic missiles. Means five times sound the sound of speed of sound. Yeah. So they like more than 1225 uh, kilometer per hour this is uh, this is the range so what happens it gives you a speed and what is happening now very few countries have mastered it and the most surprising part is that russia surprised the world then china did it and then north korea so it somehow stunned the western world so they are bringing again we were talking about uh, control system i will not talking about regime so they started several initiatives to bring this uh, missiles into the control framework. So it is not happening at the moment because Russia has taken a lead. We also did it. We have also tested. India has also tested it. 
So now comes the question, third question which I would like to say, what advantage does it give and what are the, what is the world planning it, what are the countries which have got this capability planning it. So what they are doing in warfare, they are, they have got a speed. This is hypersonic missile gives you a speed. This is basically as of now, basically cruise missiles. It is, it has not come in the ballistic missiles. It may be uh, like refined and may be mounted. But what they are planning to do, generally the countries are planning to do, that they will mount it on ICBM. This is what American, the American plan is. So obviously others will also not give it up. They will also try to do that. Mm. So means you are getting the range mm. and at the same time speed. Mm. So this is the game plan there. So mm. then what happens? The moment speed comes and this is the most worrisome part, fourth dimension I am bringing it out. Mm. That is all the existing mm. ballistic missile defense system will fail to intercept it. Mm. So that is another point of or you can say the region for a concern for general develop the countries which have not got the system that yeah okay if you have if you are deploying ballistic missile defense system this hypersonic missile will come and it will beat your system. So this is one this is one point of concern which is being talked about and this is in the discourse. But discourse is a different thing if you have got capabilities and you must have capabilities once your enemy, your adversary is having capabilities. So India is doing extremely well and how it is coming. Now come to the fifth dimension if you allow me to speak. So this happened because of our gradual work, our work indigenous path we had carved out, we had charted out mm. and had we not done it, mm. we would not have achieved this hypersonic missiles testing system. because. Many of the many of the components, many of the technologies were developed over the years. You had some failures, then you overcame those failures, then you succeeded, and now you are having the capacity to not only develop ICBM but also hypersonic missiles. So this is the contribution of indigenous science system, which you must have, and this is essential okay. to become a great power, or it is important to have a power which could be reckoned with by the world. So, this is what I am saying. Okay. Maybe, very, I, maybe uh, I can supplement our yes, technology please. on the hyper hypersonic. Yeah. I, so, so, Dr. Selvamurthy, you might like to comment on what he has said, but in addition, do enlighten us a bit right. more about long range surface to air missile systems that we are also developing that can take on incoming missiles as close as 500 meters. And this is modeled on something like the Barak 8 of the Israelis. So, is that a new technology that's also in the offing? Right, right. In a missile, there are a number of technologies goes in because we see only a missile rocket taking off. But in missile, first starting with materials, then the propulsion, control, guidance, navigation, payload integration, then the trajectory determination, monitoring the trajectories. A numerous technologies go in to see the missile going off. In this, propulsion decides the range, what range it can reach, what speed it can reach. So we have liquid propulsion, solid state motor propulsion. So these two types of propulsion are there. So in the hypersonic, we use special engine, jet engine, scrap jet engine. So this is a new technology which was developed, which is essential for the hypersonic missiles. So which we have been able to develop and demonstrated. So this gives, as you rightly said, the reaction, quick reaction, because the speed at which you can reach. Defense technologies fall into only four categories, sense, deny, reach, destroy, you name anything. So in this, the reach and destroy comes uh, from the missile. You, have, you can reach faster, accurately to the target, and you have to home to the target, reach there, seek the target, destroy them. So this is the power. So hypersonic technology is a very, very unique, complicated technology DRDO has been able to develop at a Hyderabad-based laboratory. So this we have demonstrated already, but now it has to be operationalized. So we need to do a little more testing in terms of uh, optimizing the speed, velocity, as well as the altitude and the target accuracy. So this is on this side. The other one is, as you rightly said, now we are having surface-to-air missile, a number of them, like Akash, for example, is a surface-to-air missile, which we have now 
DRDO developed 40,000 crore worth of missiles orders we have received for this. You've received orders? Uh, yes, already received 40,000 well, crores. That is a uh, reasonable proportion of our defense budget. Right. But and also a missile which we jointly developed with Russia, BrahMos. We are now going to export to Philippines. Yes. I so, the, uh, those things have started. So, this for the air defense, like for example, if you go to South Korea, you have this capability. Israel, it has the capability. So, you can intercept a projectile, a missile, either at exoatmospheric, if it is coming from a very long distance and it goes through exoatmospheric, which is more than 100 uh, kilometers, or you can intercept at endoatmospheric within 30 kilometers altitude. I'm talking about the altitude. This could be a, a low low orbit and also the uh, low altitude, uh, lower altitude uh, missiles. So for this, you need uh, the missile which can reach that and destroy it at endoatmospheric or in their own enemy territory. So the first technology is to see where from which missile, which trajectory it is coming in. So you need detection. So you need radars, you need uh, electro-optic devices, which will say that this is the missile which has taken, taken off at these coordinates. So immediately, which is the right missile which should go and neutralize, which is closest to that. So you get the distance advantage as well as the reaction advantage to neutralize at the earliest possible. So this is what comes under the ballistic missile defense as well as in air defense. This this is this plays a very. I important. just want a quick answer because I need to go to Dr. Right. Narayanan also, and that is, how is it going to add on to, or how is it different from the S four hundred systems that we are getting? Right. <clears throat> See, S four hundred uh, also has this capability, but that is a proven system. So this is yet to be proven. Okay. okay. So that is why to have the proven ballistic missile defense, we are first initially acquiring. Uh, the imported system from Russia, which we are going to get it. Yeah. But otherwise, we have the indigenous capability, which is getting validated, mm. and then that will replace this S-400. Okay. Dr. Narayanan, this is a question I think you'd probably be best placed to answer. And that is that there is a new program that is called Prelay. And Prelay is being uh, sort of uh, come into reckoning from December last year. And uh, it is successfully conducted a test flight also. At the same time, it has a range of about 400 kilometers with a 500 kg payload. And from my understanding, it is a kind of a similar thing to the Dongfeng 12, the DF-12 system that has also short range ballistic missiles possibly targeted at us from our adversary. And this is something that seems to be it seems to have done two things. One is, post the Chinese intrusions, it has created awareness for a need for a similar system. And the second is, it is the basis of the Indian Armed Forces setting up a rocket force, which I'm told will be another vertical like Army, Navy, Air Force, so you have a rocket force also. Oh, I think Dr. Silva Murthy is the best person to answer it. Okay, yet, so you, you say briefly I'm, and then he can conclude. Yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll just let you tell you. The Indian policy, has never been any missile or any weapon specific policy that okay we have to match sometimes we are dragged uh, into it we are we have not fallen into the trap that okay pakistan is doing hath 9 or china is doing df9 df8 and df929 so we should have any matching capability so we have to see the enemy's assets where we intend to target so we have already got capabilities like you have talked about 500 kilogram. We have go, we have already tested 1500 kilogram warhead. So it is not and it is documented. It is not that it is just talked about. Right. It is properly documented and Dr. Selva Murthy will just uh, validate it. Plus range. The range we have very flexible range. Even Agni once we are talking about. Agni with, it was frozen. Mm. It was around 1200 to 1400 kilometer range. Mm. Mm. Uh, thereafter, we made changes according to our needs. Then we brought it down to 700, then it went to 2800, 3500, then 4000, then 5000, and now it could be anything 8, 000, around 8000, 8, 10,000. Yeah, I but have the statistics of agreement. Yeah, so <laughs> depending on your needs. So you should not just develop a system because 
other in other parties or your adversary is having this system. So, we have to see what we need, where we have to target, what all we have to target. So, we are developing capabilities and in missiles, underwater missiles capabilities have also been developed. So, you know because of drones, the advent of drones, people are talking about not only aircraft carrier is being talked about as a, a sitting duck, but also even submarines are being questioned that tomorrow it could be irrelevant and United Kingdom has in fact started reviewing uh, the now about submarines, how whether it should be the next generation should be inducted or not. So, all these things are going. So, you have to cater to these developments, these technological developments which are coming in the world and your adversaries are taking. So, you have to talk about your own okay, needs. So, understood. So, yeah. So, basically we are guided by A, our own resource limitations, B, our own strategic considerations exactly. and C, Imperatives. the template that is emerging in the world as to where new technologies are headed. So, no point wasting your energy in researching something Absolutely. which by the time it comes into, uh, into service is already outdated. Absolutely. But Dr. Selvamurthy, last word to you. Uh, please explain this Pralay program and its. is it the basis of a new rocket force in the armed forces? Certainly, the racket, rocket force is a big deterrent because all these are deterrent because you can deliver a nuclear warhead through all this, most of the missiles, whether it's Agni, Prithvi, Brahmos. Uh, so, it can, even Pralai, can carry both conventional warhead as well as the nuclear warhead. So, these are all the deterrent, strength respect strength. The other enemy will respect you if you have Absolutely. the strength. Absolutely. So, these are deterrents. And Pralaya is one of the recent uh, program of uh, DRDO. And once we had this Ladakh experience, so we wanted a short range surface to air missile and also surface to surface capability to reach there. So, with that capability, uh, this has been developed. And another one very important thing which I want to bring that is the Rudram, which is the anti radiation missile. Yes. Because you can just silence all the air defense of the enemy. Yes, I believe that is the new thing. That is the new thing. So that you can blind their eyes when our missile reaches or our aircraft reaches or our bomb reaches, all their radars, electro-optic devices, sensing, all sensors will go fat. At what stage are we? Yeah, we have already demonstrated it. Okay. We have demonstrated okay. and now we are increasing the range accuracy. So, this anti-radiation missile, Rudram, yeah. is yet another very important uh, development. Well, on that center. happy note, I'll have to request you to hold your horses because we can't go on any further. But what is really very, very clear to me that our missile regime uh, or our missile uh, research related activities and the results that we have seen over the years is clearly something which is a matter of pride for the country, which is a benchmark for many other countries in the world that if India can do it, why not us? But quite clearly, we are in the league of the top four or five countries that claim to have all sorts of missile systems. We are slowly, steadily getting there, but there is no stopping. As one author once wrote, it is a juggernaut that cannot be contained. <laughs> thank you very much for your V, sir. And thank you very much for enlightening us. And thanks for watching. Until our next episode, goodbye.